Ah, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, we're getting back into the lessons for you. Today's lesson is going off some, some real dope um, experiences I have in putting this shit in perspective. Um, being emotionally unavailable. <laughs> what does that mean? And why is that good? Um, this is going to be one that people are going to be like, you know what? Emotional availability, you're supposed to be open all the time, blah, blah, blah. Now, when I say being emotionally unavailable, what do I mean? What I mean is you're not supposed to be available for all emotions, all right? You're not always supposed to be open for all emotions. Um, and that's a hard thing for people to understand. When I try and explain this to people sometimes, they try and tell me I'm not empathetic. They try to tell me I'm this and that. But I know it's good. Um, but you do too. So let's break this down a little bit. So one is that within any relationship, um, this is a beautiful thing. Relationships are, are how you people, two people relate and how relative you are to one another. We talked about that before. Um, so within relativity and with all these things, these are agreements. These are things that go on between people. So whenever you're with someone, whenever you're having a relation, whenever you're having anything like that, there's a pretty much like a contractual agreement, even though like it doesn't have to line up so like rigid as that, but there are certain things that are expected of the two people in order to keep yourselves in relation and relativity to one another. You have to have similar morals, you need to have something in common, a linker, like a bridge, right? However, within this thing and within a relationship and within all that, there's a lot of different connections. So this is where we're going to talk about detachment a little bit too, because I have some things about detachment that I also want to bring into this and teaching people and talk to you guys about proper detachment. There's a difference between just being completely like hands off of everything um, and being like actually detached. And then there's a difference between being emotionally unavailable and just having like, a respect for your emotions and knowing which emotions that you don't want to trigger, right? Um, and what things happen. So like this goes from, I remember I got this out in, when I was in Costa Rica um, because I was starting to meet a lot of people. I was meeting a lot of conscious people. Um, and I was meeting a lot of conscious like females and things like that. And when you get into these situations, when you get into a spot where like you finally start meeting people on your conscious level, there are things that come up, there are feelings that come up because you feel understood and like that's dope shit. Um, however, some people come into relationship with baggages. They come into relationship with past understandings. They come into relationship with things from before. And that's like one thing you have to remember um, that you shouldn't ever go into any new experience holding on to things from before. You have to be open to that new experience. You have to be ready and willing. Now, I'm not saying that you have to forget some of the things that you've learned from past situations, but you have to be open to things coming at you in a different way, right? And be open to the fact that not everyone is the same. You know what I mean? Okay. So when I say emotionally unavailable and what that means, that means that you're not supposed to be able to tap into all your emotions. There's some emotions that you have that you really shouldn't be using, they don't really, they don't serve you, right? Anything that's like insecurity, anger, things of these things, when these things start coming up, you should be emotionally unavailable, right? You should really start to put into perspective what is bringing that on. Is it something that's coming from a past relationship? Is it something that's coming from that relationship there? What are the things that are bringing up these certain feelings? Because these things aren't supposed to be available, right? These things aren't supposed to be being tapped into. No real relationship, if it's working properly and you're relative to a person in a proper manner, is going to make you feel insecure, right? So once you start to harbor and harness these emotions, you need to understand how to put it in perspective. So that's my chat today because I see that there's a lot of people who are lurking on detaching from things. Um, detachment is a key in order to, like, ascend right you can't if you're bogged down by dense feelings and emotions you're not going to be able to raise yourself up and raise your frequency all these different things um because attachment is the key to holding you down it's like a hot air balloon like if i got tied to the ground i'm going to stay relative to the earth right um so 
And what are some things that you need to remember? You have to remember that, like, you, who you are, how you represent yourself, how you express yourself is perfect, in a sense. Not saying that people don't have things to work on. As long as you're a good person and you ha your intentions are good, how you express yourself is you. So you're not supposed to be looking for a person who, like, you have to change yourself for and do all these things. You're just looking for someone who's going to accept the way you express fully because there is someone out there who does that, right? So that insecurity of not being able to find someone is going to make you become, like, different. It's going to change you. Like, thinking that you can't find someone, you're going to start to make compromises on yourself, right? And if we, if this whole experience is in life and everything is about finding the true organic version of yourself, should you really be making compromises on who you are and things that represent and express that, that energy, that source, right? You have to be able to be true to that and know that there is stuff there there's someone there so it's about the patience right so it's about being emotionally unavailable to certain things right it's about not feeling empathetic to certain things when people bring them up to your table so what am what am i trying to express so um there was this one situation where i was with it being it they were feeling like this type of way from relationships that they had before and things that they were bringing into the situation they were they were used to these type of things and blah 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 and they expected me to just fall in line with those things. However, I am taking things slower. I'm a patient person. I don't want to get be hopping up into things. So this caused a rift. And because it was there, I was I just wasn't feeling it. And I was being told I was emotionally unavailable. And I I just didn't deny it. And I I just didn't deny it because I was being emotionally unavailable. I was being emotionally unavailable to the concept and idea of having to align with someone else's expectation of me. So you have to remember that when it comes to people's expectations of you, you want to be emotionally unavailable because what someone's expecting of you and what the reality is of who you are don't always align. And that's okay. That's okay. As long as you're a good person and your intentions are pure and you're not trying to do any like fuckery or anything like that, you'll stay on your path. If your knowledge is coming from truth and your knowledge is coming from goodness, you're trying to do your thing, don't worry about that kind of stuff. Like, there's a million people out there. There's all types of people. There's all types of people who ex express differently, who show love differently, who take love differently, all that. You just got to be open to those things because not everyone's for you. Like, not every person in this world is someone that you're supposed to be cool with. If you're so, if you're so hell-bent on being able to blend in and all that with everyone is going to be a problem for you as well because you're going to start seeing the more you start allowing different people into your life, the more you start to try and accept other people and do all these things all the time, like the more you're going to see you're going to come up to friction because it's dense to try and harbor a lot of different emotions. It's dense. Like people are very dense. They try and hold you into a lot of things. You got to be able to be, emotionally unavailable to certain things because some emotions just don't work okay so with that we have to talk about detachment and proper detachment proper detachment is a key right um, a lot of people are use detachment and the theory of detachment and the understanding of detachment as a way of running away from things detachment has nothing to do with running away from feelings like okay I'm gonna say it again detachment has nothing to do with running away from feelings Detachment has nothing to do with being blind to, like, feeling. Detachment has to do with respecting feeling. It has to do with understanding feeling in the realest way. So, like, in order to be detached from feelings, you have to understand feelings. And you have to be able to understand emotions. You have to be able to have a feeling and understanding of emotions in a deep sense where you can acknowledge what it is and then detach from it. Because then you can still be connected and be understanding of the situation most people try and think it as something that they just sweep under the rug all the time like oh the second i feel angry i just detach no you have to first internalize so first before i do anything if something feeling any kind of feeling comes up i first take a second to observe right i can't just like sweep it under the rug you got to observe first right so if 
I have a feeling of anger, right? Something makes me angry, and I sit back and say, yo, why does this make me angry? Think about why it makes me angry. Is it something that I'm doing? Is it my perspective on it that's wrong? Is it another person's like action and perspective on this situation that's a problem? Why am I caring about it? Why am I doing this? Then once I finally come to the point where I have a full understanding of how I created this emotion, how this emotion even got into my feeling, because emotion is just like a thought being played out. So how did this thought happen? What is it? Then once I finally can fully put the barriers and perimeters around it, then can I detach from it, right? But see, we try and get to a point of like a new, does anyone read Brave New World? We like, we we're trying to get to a point in society of like this brave new world theory where we don't like to want to, we don't want to understand why we have it. We just, once we feel it, I like, nah, I'm, I'm off this. We can't do that. And that's not going to allow you to be like emotionally intelligent because emotional intelligence is like the word I like to use um, for um, detachment, not detachment because detachment allows you to just like separate yourself all the time. It has nothing to do with detachment and just separation. It has to do with the emotional intelligence to understand, okay, what is this feeling? What is this? And can I and should I give this attention and feeling? Should I really care about these things? Should I really be trying to put my energy into this? Then I can properly detach. Then I can properly close the door on an emotion and feeling. But not until I understand why I'm feeling this way. Not until I can define the barrier. Right. Um, we're getting to a point in society where we just like, want to like close off from a lot of things and closing yourself is not a good thing. Right. Closing yourself is not a problem. Like it's, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. I'm sorry. Closing yourself off things is a problem. Um, you're supposed to be open so you can define it because you got to know why it's bad. Just like I, it's stupid for me to just not eat something or not do something just because I hear it's bad. Like, I got to then tell myself why it's bad. I want to educate myself why it's bad. A lot of people in the conscious community, that's how they be, right? You hear about stuff, you're like, nah, this, that's wrong because I heard from this. But how do you know it's wrong? What did you do to tell yourself it's wrong? So, like, what or are you just now accepting opinions from others? Because that's how we got into this position where we are today. A lot of people just expected accepted shit that they heard without doing their research, Right? So you got to research yourself. The more I research myself, the more I'll be able to define what consciously makes sense for me. I'll be able to detach from things properly. I'll be able to understand my emotions properly. The more I study self, I can understand how I react to things. Now something that I had to learn, right? I had to learn a lot of it. I had to learn a lot of different things when it comes to that. That self mastery. We don't take enough time to really hold the keys on self mastery. Right, because there's a lot of things that we hope for. Like I found that I have, I have like an insecurity with like wanting a significant other. That's like an insecurity that comes up sometimes because I know because the universe keeps sending me people that come into my life and like I vibe with and then they want to make like fast moves. It's like testing me to see like, okay, am I going to like try and jump into this quick relationship or am I going to slow down and just take my time? Like I see that that's something that comes up. So like that's on me. That's like a learning thing for me. Like. <laughs> Everyone else has like ways that the universe shows them things in other directions. That's something that I do. And then you almost fall into it sometimes. I'm like, yo, this is cool. This is cool. But you got to remember, be patient. Be emotionally unavailable at first because it's okay to do that because someone's got to earn that. They have to earn the right to you because like it's like crazy. The way I see it is this like uh, you got, okay, <laughs> when I was in high school, right, I got a job at Subway. Right. And I had to go to like four interviews to get a job at Subway and I had to dress nice to get a job at Subway. I had to go and sit down and really talk and like put on a put like put on a face and be like articulate and all that to get a job at Subway. If you got some people out here giving up themselves, giving their bodies, giving their feelings and stuff to people after like one interview. Right. How is it harder for me to get a job at Subway than for me to get someone like body for me to accept for someone to allow like allow themselves to you right you should automatically have like a thought like what how can you give yourself to me and be so open when you really haven't proven anything to me yet you haven't shown me like what your resume is and you got to check resumes it's a fact 
because there's weird things going on out here today. There's a lot of people with different opinions, different philosophies, and you got to make sure that it's moving with your truth. You don't want to just start accepting, 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 being completely out there and get with just no idea of what you're being out there for and open for. Um, because again, there's all different ways that source is expressed. You have to make sure it aligns with your truth because in everyone's reality, they have certain truths, they have certain lessons and intricacies of who they are. And your goal in life is to get people around you that all kind of blend with you because the point of life is frictionless living. And people, when I say this, people will be like, bro, but it, go, it goes against everything. I know it goes against everything you're taught. The point is frictionless living. Why is it that way? Because like war for peace doesn't make sense. So you, it has to be, war for peace has been what we've been trying, right? Everyone's been trying to fight war and go into friction in order to find peace at the end. But is that always the key? Has that been how it's like supposed to be? It's supposed to be frictionless. You're supposed to be getting involved and in being around people who <laughs> express you, right? And express a fluidity. And the way you do that is by not always allowing yourself and putting yourself in positions and putting yourself around people and things that make you feel certain ways. Now, like within journeys of life, right? You do have times that try you, but the, the trials are different. It's more, it's not like, um, shouldn't bring up feelings of insecurity. Whenever you feel insecure, that should be a red flag. That should be a red flag because that means something up. That means that you're holding an expectation. Because I only get insecure if I don't reach an ex expectation or I don't meet an expectation within myself. That's the only thing that makes you insecure. So if you're around someone, right, and someone makes you feel insecure about something, you have to look at that. Why am I feeling insecure? Is that an expectation that they're putting on me or is that an expectation I'm putting on the situation to myself? And that's the problem because we're not supposed to place expectations on things, right? You're supposed to be open. Right. So insecurity is something you should never be emotionally available for. And if you already see that per that step in the room early in any relationship, you need to cut the relationship off because that means that someone's holding expectations and that's what's going to ruin a relationship. Right. Trials and tribulations are OK. People coming together is tough. All these things are different and in ways of expressing themselves. And that's OK. Right. But you have to check what emotions are there. What emotions do you really want to be available for? Right. Does that, that's not to mean that you're always going to get along 110 percent with everyone that's around you. Right. But it's like, how are they challenging you? Is it is it a challenge in a sense that they're opening your mind to something that you haven't really seen before? Or are they just bickering and fighting you on something that doesn't is isn't really significant? Right. If someone's getting into an argument with me because my beard's too long and they want me to shave my beard, like that's something that's like that doesn't make sense. Right. Like I have to cut that energy off. Right. But if it's because I might be being narrow minded on something and they're trying to show me their perspective, then I should be open in a sense. Right. But that doesn't mean that I got to fall in line with it. Like when I was out in Costa Rica. There was a man who was a shaman and he was telling people it's OK to drink Coca-Cola. It's okay to drink Coca-Cola because you're an alchemist. You could transmute Coca-Cola. And I was saying that's garbage. I was saying it's garbage. I, I just didn't believe it. However, I was open to it. But then when you logically think about it, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's a, like if you can transmute it, cool, but why would you? If Why would you make yourself do that? Like, if, if I can live in a place where I don't have to always read the labels on food, why would I go to a place and live in a place where I could leave, we have to read the labels on food all the time? Like just because I can do it doesn't always mean that I should, right? So you have to be unavailable with things. Don't connect to certain things. Then I had to just detach from that thing at all because I was like, yo, that person is just giving me a perspective of their consciousness. And now I have to just remove myself from it because, you know, it's good and all. There's some people that he might help and things like that. But overall, that shit doesn't serve me. It doesn't serve my overall purpose. So you got to move on. So be emotionally unavailable. Don't be available to all things. Know when to cut the line and draw the line. Know what the truth is. Once you align with truth, don't let people shake you off the truth, right? Because there are some things that are that are truths, right? Truths. Like I always say, like, you know, high fructose corn syrup is bad. 
okay, cool. So if anyone's telling you to think and drink things that contain high fructose corn syrup and tell you that your body can transmute it, you know that's not true. Because you know that even if your body could do that, you're making yourself do more work instead of doing less. The goal is not to do, it's to be. The goal is to be able to be a, a being organically, right? So if I want to be organic, that means that I'm not doing so much. I'm just being able to be in homeostasis, right? Homeostasis and alkalinity and all that work when the body is relaxed. Not when it's working to overcome things all the time. You don't want to stress the body. You want to be in a place of chill, right? So how does that work? Well, if I can do things that are stimulating the body, stimulating the mind, then I don't got to worry, right? I don't got to worry about that stuff. So be emotionally unavailable. <laughs> be unavailable for some things. Under, be open to listen. Always listen. Listen, but be available, unavailable when it comes to if it's going to affect you or not. Be, be able to detach once you understand why it's affecting you, right? If something's making you feel some way, figure out why it's making you feel some way first before you move it off to the side. Before I say, yo, I got to detach from this person, they're making me feel insecure. Figure out why are you insecure first? Where is the expectation coming from that's not being held? Is it because they're expecting something from you that you can't reach? Are you expecting some something from yourself that you can't do? What is it? Once you define that, then it's okay to detach. But don't just detach without knowing what's good because that's how we're getting into this bad idea of detachment. That's why we're getting in this place where it's almost like an unempathetic feeling. Because you're supposed to still have empathy. Right? You're supposed to still want better for people around you. You're supposed to want better and still be moving towards the common good. So that means I have to still be able to understand and rationalize what is the situation. i got to figure out, okay, if it's bad for me to have anger and i got to detach from anger, first got to figure out why something is making me angry to detach from it. I don't just say, yo, I'm angry. Fuck that. I'm good. good. Because now you're not getting, you're not learning what is the actual root of that anger. What's the reason? They're, you're missing the lesson and the blessing by just saying, you know, I detach from this automatically. So for some people, I, 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 I beg you, if you can find it at like a used bookstore or something, like go find Brave New World. Find Brave New World and read Brave New World. Um, or just go online and look up the spark notes. Uh, which is the easier way to do it. If you can find an ebook on it, look up Brave New World, and it, it'll explain this. That it'll show you what the theory is. Because the problem is that like Western culture started to grab on to these like really deep spiritual philosophies. But like the problem with a lot of Western culture is people want all the praise, they want the glory, but no one wants to put in the work. Like it takes work to be true, detached from things, to understand why you need to detach from something. Like, for me, I think, like, okay, there's been relationships in my life. There's been relationships with people that I've had to detach from. And it's been hard because, like, I had to spend a lot of time understanding why I had to detach from them first. And that usually takes really heavy introspective. You really have to sit down and look at yourself in order to be able to say, yo, this is why something's not good for me. This is why something is good for me. This, and sometimes, like, shit that is, like, tough is really good for you because a challenge. And you got to still be open to challenges. Just because something is a challenge, that doesn't mean it's bad for you, right? So, again, it's about defining what it means and what it is. And the only way you can do that is to really look at it first. That's why I say you can't detach from anything until you understand why the feeling is there, why it's there in the first place. So it takes introspection first. I got to feel it before I can detach from it. I can't just cut myself off right away. I can be emotionally unavailable to a feeling or emotion after I understand why the emotion affects me, why it's a problem, why it's something wrong, what it is that makes it wrong in my eyes, what am I doing to feed into this feeling and emotion, then I can become unavailable. Not just once I feel something that feel, makes me feel uncomfortable, I detach from it right away. And that's what I see around. Like you have people who aren't being honest with each other, they're not being truthful because they're sitting here and just trying to go on these philosophies that were put in there because they were something that came from self mastery, that came from understanding, not just a way to just like stuck things off to the side.
So we got to start to look into theories more. We got to start paying attention to theories. We got to start questioning things, questioning ourselves, all that stuff. And then beauty comes from it, right? Beauty comes from self-mastery. And at the same point, you'll never really be able to fully master yourself because there's always new lessons that come around. But you can get a good idea of what's going on. Um, I hope this video was able to pick and get you guys on a certain idea of like what what I'm trying to say. I know it comes from a lot of different places because being emotionally unavailable sounds like something that is that you shouldn't do. A lot of people try and tell you to be available. Always be available for emotion. Always but then you get too subjective. Like you get too subjective. Society's problem right now is too much subjectivity. It's too much I feel like for me this is good. But there's truth. If they, if everything one just goes by what they feel all the time, is there ever truth? There's never truth. And we have to start looking at truth, purpose, things like that more, not less. Because that's what got us here. Got us here is people feeling that they could do certain things, right? Like you have a company that feels like they can cut costs by doing this, this, and this. Because they felt that way, it led to this, this, and this. Like, so we have to be able to understand that it's not always about how you feel about something. There's an objective truth there. And the only way you can really sit in objective truth is to be emotionally unavailable for some things. You can't always just attach emotion and be open emotionally to every single thing that comes or you're gonna end up being a dense person. You don't wanna be dense, you wanna be light. So I gotta understand emotion, I gotta understand why this is feeling this way. And so I can now get over it and detach proper detachment methods not just hiding from problems um, because there's a lot of beauty out there there's a lot of dope people there's a lot of dope ideas there's a lot of dope philosophies there's a lot of people trying to do different things and teach people how to heal and stuff like that but you have to be able to then figure out what's the real thing and hold on to truth still and still be able to figure out what is right and if this is right or wrong and the only way is to be unavailable for some things you can't just be open for everything. You can't just let everything go without contract or contractual agreements because relations are relatively. Who was the first to start Central America movement? Was it Dr. Sevi or Eligio? Um, okay, Dr. Sevi was super. For me, Dr. Sevi was talking more about Africa. Um, Dr. Sevi was talking about the tropics, though. I mean, Eligio. My man Tahuti, Nature Way, whatever you want to call him, like he was talking about Costa Rica super heavy. But he was most people are just talking about the tropics. Um I think like I think it was just like one of those things, like people were just talking about the tropics, like between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, because that's really where like the, the beauty is. And once you get down there you see why. Because all the fruits and all the foods are in abundance there. You don't have to worry about seasonal growing. The problem is the farther you get away from the tropics, seasonal growing is like a thing. Like, I can't grow this here, I can't grow this then. Um, everything's a lot easier. Sebi was just in Honduras um, because that's where he was from. That's where he grew up, was born. Um, however, he also was really big on getting back to Africa. He was working with Gaddafi and things like that. Um, and Eligio at one point was talking about Africa, but Africa has a lot of karma. Um, so Central America seems to be a little bit more progressive. Like Costa Rica is pretty progressive. Like they run off mostly sustainable energy. Well, I'm sorry, all sustainable energy right now. Um, however, it's like very close to America still. Like there's still a lot of American influence there. Um, just like in all Central American countries. However, there is like still like a national pride still. Like you go into the indigenous areas of Central America and you can see that um, they're still very holding on to a lot of traditional things and traditional understanding and really protective over like a lot of things that are going on because America was doing some fucking America and like well UN countries Western civilization has done some wild things in Central America that we don't even really know about like when I was down there I learned that uh, the UN or I think it was either America or like the UN coalition they sprayed this like crazy chemical throughout Costa Rica that killed the cacao trees um, and diseased all the cacao because at one point Costa Rica was like the biggest cacao producer in the world and it was getting a lot of money and taking away from 
UN and colonial like countries. Um, it was taking away from their money production. So they went in, they started spraying these chemtrails with this disease that killed a lot of the cacao trees. And like you see it, like there are cacao trees that they're growing, they're starting to get ripe, and it's looking like, you know, this is a beautiful tree that just turns black. Um, and a lot of the trees are just now like shaking the disease, but the locals know about this. That's why like they have a problem with like certain gringos. They have, they do, they have a problem. Like if you go down there and you try and flash money and do stuff like that, they really don't mess with you. Um, it's, it's just like, it's a crazy thing. Like they know, and they're about their clean water. They're about their clean food. Like you don't really have to worry about organic. The question organic doesn't really come up that much. Um, yeah, I hope that answered your question a little bit um, because it's all about getting between the tropics, Cancer and Capricorn. Like that's like the main truth um, in the matter. Once you get to these these locations, man, I'm telling you, it's just healing. It's beauty. Um, yeah, being emotionally unavailable, um, get yourself in the spot where you can understand objective truth and like be in that spot um, and just just living in it. It's like just living it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I say. Any other questions? Anyone got questions or anything? Um, this was just a quick one to get me started. Like, I have a whole bunch of downloads that I was talking and, like, experiencing <laughs> through my time there that I'll be getting into. But emotional availability, the biggest, if I can leave you with, like, a couple things to just remember, just remember that not all emotions should be available for people to tap into. Not everyone should be allowed to make you angry. Not everyone should be allowed to to make you feel certain ways. Like should be like you have to. They have to prove their validity first. Like I said earlier, like to get a job at Subway, I had to do three interviews, right? <laughs> and I had to really try to get that when I was a kid. Like if someone's stepping into your life and expecting to only know you one to meet you one time or spend one occasion with you, and they're trying to like give you the job or like do things like that you have to question that like. There's a process to be able to understand what someone's intentions are, how where someone's at consciously, what they their morals and principles are before you can. It's good for you to make a relation with them, right? You have to define the relationship first, and it's hard to do that if you only meet someone because there's a lot of people who are have forms of consciousness. There are a million forms of consciousness out there, and don't get caught up in the fact that someone is just conscious. Be patient. Because there's levels to this. We all know, like, there's levels to it. So if I just automatically hear someone like, yeah, you are everything, this and this, and you're like, yo, 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 this is, this is what you, like, you have to find, take your time and find out what it really means. So you, that means a little bit of emotional unavailability. However, always be empathetic. Always be willing to understand and don't hold prejudgments. But it's okay to not always put all your emotions on everything. It's okay to not be 100% open to a person and allow them fully into your life right away. It's okay to like get to know them. Getting to know all these things are good things, right? Detachment. Don't just blindly detach from things. Be able to understand what the emotion is, why you're detaching from it, why it does these things. Then detach. Detach only after you fully given respect to the situation. Respect just means to revisit, to review, right? That's what respect means. Because if you respect someone, you constantly review and you like look at them from different perspectives. Respect, we don't even know what the proper version, like thing for respect is. We think that just means like, oh, if I respect someone, that means I just believe in no question. No, it means that you revisit things and that go on with that person to look at it from a different light. So because you honor that person. And if I honor something, then I want to understand it. So I'm going to look at it from different ways, right? So if you disrespect people, you'll just always give it different views and see. Once you do that, then you'll be able to fully see, okay, is this person good for me or are they bad for me? Is this person going to help me or are they going to hinder me? Then you can properly detach um, because detachment is key because you don't want to be dense. There's a lot of people super dense in this reality. Don't let yourself become dense. Everyone is beautiful. However, it doesn't mean you always got to be around people, all these people all the time. I got into, someone was trying to tell me I'm unempathetic because uh, they're talking about friendship, right? They were like, oh, if you had a friend, right? And this was a complete, like, they were trying to get me, like, this is some completely, like, hypothetical shit. They're like, if you have a friend, 
right? And your friend um, had some like crazy situation where someone took their family hostage, right? And they asked for a certain amount of money and your friend went and they stole money from you um, and didn't tell you so they could save their family. And then they told you after, like, how would you feel? Would you, and I said, I wouldn't be friends with them really. And they were like that, why? And I said, well, my idea is that if I'm good friends with you and you have this horrible situation come up, I would just expect that you feel comfortable telling me and knowing that I would help you. Because like, that's how we should have a friendship is built on communication and understanding morals and principles. So if you have this problem and you know I can help you, I would think that if I'm really your good friend, you'd just come to me and ask me. You stealing the money and going to do it, that just shows me that inside of your mind, there's either a problem with our friendship where you couldn't trust me that way, and it just brings up all these barriers. So that means that like I forgive you, but I wouldn't keep you around. I wouldn't be emotionally open to you because you already showed me your color. You showed me that there's a reason there's something either in your mind or something that I'm representing to you that you can't trust. So I have to be emotionally unavailable to this person. Do you understand? Doesn't mean that that person was a bad person for what they did or like there wasn't some like all these crazy scenarios, but it just shows you that like that situation, that person, there's something different and wrong. Like, do you guys feel me what I'm saying? Like, it's not mean, like you can still forgive. You can still always forgive someone and all that, but that doesn't mean you have to be completely open to them with everything you do, right? So that person might not be a bad person. They were put in a crazy situation, something that was like out of control, they had to steal money to save their family, blah, blah, blah. It's high stress. I get it, right? That Now this is all hypothetical. But the fact that they didn't trust you enough to, like, they didn't trust me enough to come talk to me, be like, hey, here's, what, here's what's going on. Can you help me? You have this amount of money. I need this amount of money. Can you help me? It's my family. Like, the fact that they couldn't even just have the conversation first would make would make red flags go off in my mind and be like, well, wait a second. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Why would you just automatically jump to doing this before we could go A, B, and C? So you should then be emotionally unavailable to that person. You shouldn't allow that person back in your life 110% because it, they showed you that there's something weird with the friendship where they don't, there's like a weird trust barrier. So like you should be, if it's like, you know what I mean? Um, that's what I'm talking about. Like you shouldn't always, like you shouldn't then make yourself completely emotionally available to that person again because you see that there's something going on. There's something that, like they're not doing to you as you would do to them. That's like a major rule. Do unto others as you would like to be done unto yourself. So when you create um, a relationship with anyone, when you create a bond with someone, when you create a relation, it's a contractual agreement. You guys are coming to an agreement on things that are norms. You're coming to an agreement on, okay, I'm expecting this from you. You're expecting this from me. And it comes in a way where it's meeting mutually. So like, I have to now assess these certain things because it's there's certain agreements that people have to make. And that's the beauty of a relationship. It's how relative you can be in relation. And there's always terms. That's why contracts come with terms. Everything comes with terms of engagement, of agreement, and things like that. Sometimes they're more spoken. Sometimes it just goes unsaid. So, like, be mindful. Don't be emotionally available to people who show you that they're not on the same conceptual path as you. And that's how you got to stay. <laughs> that's why I say don't be completely emotionally available to everything. When people try and tell me that, it's crazy. They'll be like, no, you seem a little bit unempathetic. I'll be like, no, I'm super empathetic. I empathize with everyone. However, I'm not available for all these emotions. At a certain extent, I know when to just like leave that shit there and keep it moving. Um, and that's what it's about. Like, It's about like knowing when to detach. Because if you're always attached to everything, it's going to be a hard, it's a hard thing to do. I tried to do that. I tried to be like the activist for everything for a long time. I was like, yo, this sucks. Like, don't. But then I had to just be like, yo, I understand what it is. I'm empathetic to people who are going through it. But at a certain extent, I have to detach myself. Because it doesn't help me as a being to always be attached to all these feelings, to always be attached to all these crazy emotions. You have to know. That's what consciousness is about, is being consciously aware of something. And then once you're consciously aware, knowing it and then moving on past it. It's not about being consciously aware of it and then just focusing on it all the time. you got to be like, yo, I see this as a problem. Now, how do I solve it and then just move past it? Like, 
like the situation with where I'm at now. Like there's not really sun and shit out here. It's cold as fuck. There's not really good food sources out here. All these different things. So instead of just staying here and being like, yo, I can't get good food. Yo, like the water sucks, all this stuff. I went to the tropics, got some land, and was like, yo, here's where I'm going to live <laughs> now. Like I come back here just because I need to like get things ready to go like to, so I can live down there forever. Not not so I can stay here. So now when I'm here, I'm not like, yo, oh my God, I just got to live in this. Like, no, no, I created a place for me to get out of this environment. I moved on from it. And that's what everyone needs to do to understand, define the reality you're in, figure out a way to get past it and then just keep walking and then just don't don't revisit it. So like detachment again, like I said, with detachment. Understand why you feel a certain feeling. Understand why you feel like an insecurity about something. Understand why something makes you angry first before you detach from it. Don't just get angry or feel insecure and be like, oh, I, I'm not dealing with this person. I'm not dealing with this thing. Because then you miss the lesson. Say, Buddha would sit, that's why people take Buddhism and they fuck it up. It's like, you know, Buddha would sit there and meditate on it. Like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why is this bugging me? Why, why is it? Ask all the whys first. Then once I know why, then I can detach from it because then I, I'll know when that situation comes again how to completely circumnavigate it. But if I'm just like dipping from it just because like it automatically sparks something, then I'll know what the lesson was. And in the lesson is the blessing. Um, so with that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. Um, it's, it's actually kind of warm out here, like compared to what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to come back to the Arctic tundra and there was actually rain today. So I'm like, yo, it's not that cool. But I'm still used to like all that cold weather. So I got super layers on. Um, tropics is where it's at. Like, sounds dope out here. It's definitely cool people. I'm so happy to be able to see family. I'm like, yo, I saw my baby brother. This dude got big. He got so big. He was in a walker. I was like, bro, you're in a walker. He was running around like, ah, scattered. Uh, so it was dope. Uh, I saw my dad, dope. Like I get to see my other brother and my mom today. I'm hyped. Um, but at the same token, I am missing the tropics. You know what I mean? I'm missing being able to take a bath in the river and like all that cool stuff, like crab fruit. Like yo, oh, like I was just thinking, like I used to walk, I used to go for a walk every morning, and there was this big star fruit tree, and like star fruit is. Like there's two types of star fruit. There's like real sour star fruit and then there's sweet star fruit. And for some reason, everyone had sour star fruit. But this one tree that I used to walk by always had the sweetest star fruit ever. And that was like a morning ritual. Like I'd walk down to the river to go take a bath. I'd be like, yo, mm, sweet star fruit. And then I keep going and like, yo, you miss stuff like that. That's like one of those, that's one of those things that like keeps me vibing. Like, yo, that's, that's dope. Um, but anyway, that's just some light shit. Uh, so everyone, so for people, I have some people who've been contacting me about Central America, getting out there, things like that. Again, keep the questions rolling. I'm around. If you need any questions about anything, where to go, how to go there, what are things you need to bring, what are some things you're like, let me know. I got you. Um, keep, and for people, I have some people who are like, yo, you're making videos again. Cool. Um, I got some more videos to make. Uh, I have like a notebook. I wish I should. I have a notebook full. Like I kept a journal while I was down there. So like all my every person I was meeting, thoughts, things like that. I started scribbling down. So there's some things that I want to share um, with you guys and some cool things. And again, if anyone like the message board over here is for questions. Anyone has questions. Anyone has things that they're trying to fi find out about the tropics or find out about like anything that I was learning and things like that. Or if you have like, or if you want to challenge some of the things that. That I'm so, like do it like I want I'm open for that stuff I don't I don't get mad about things I love I love being able to have discussion anyone ever wants to join in on something that I'm doing let me know we could always join in and have like some good discussion it's all about discussion discussion and communication is what's going to take this to the next level discussion and communication is the reason that we're in a predicament that we're in because people aren't able to openly communicate and discuss things without getting angry and things like that so let's try and change that um, but I love you all. I love myself. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day. <laughs> um, right. Like I am nature. I'm nurture. I love, I'm everything. I'm nothing. When I say I am, that means you are because you hear I am and you immediately make that yourself. So if I say 
I am beautiful, you are beautiful. Why? Because you just said I am beautiful in your own mind. So see it, believe it, and it's all everything you need, right? So have a great day today.